Tailwind CSS is a utility for CSS framework that allows you to quickly and easily style your components and elements using predefined classes. Unlike traditional CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, Material UI that provides pre-built components, Tailwind CSS focuses on providing a robust set of utility classes that you can use to create custom designs. Tailwind allows you to create highly customized and responsive designs without having to write a lot of custom CSS code. Coming to the setup of Tailwind CSS in our project, we have already set up those three in our globals.css. Let's take a look. This is inside the styles directory, globals.css. I've already set that up. I have imported this globals.css in the underscore app.js so it is available in every page. You can see. And now let's do some hands-on of Tailwind CSS by creating some pages. So we have apply.js that we get from the template. So let's run the code and see what this is currently and we will remove what it is right now and start to code from beginning. We have started the front end and it will take some time to start the server. Okay, let's check the local host over to apply page so this is the design and we will remove this completely let's remove this and let's see the changes okay great so let's start coding the apply.js page first we will create a react arrow function using the snippet rafce this will help us to create that arrow function with a flash let's name this apply and let's create a fragment I will create a section here and inside that I will create a div with class main and now let's uh, add some classes to this section so uh, I have opened the reference image to what we will be creating we will be creating this interface so this is just here for reference and as we are using custom background so tailwind does not allow us to do that easily so we will be using our normal css so we already have this normal css so we will delete that and code over from beginning for custom css we will use module based css so here we have apply.module.css and we will import that here import dot dot slash styles slash apply dot module dot css and we will name this import styles from this and now any classes that will be using this custom css will have to be named with these styles so i will make this classes dynamic and we will name this like styles dot background so with this when we create any class named background let's say background color black this will be applied to the section so let's let's take a look at this as you can see this is having a black background and let's add tailwind css along with this custom css so we will do a plus and then start writing our normal tailwind css or classes that we usually do so make sure to put a space here so that this class and another class will have a spacing in between them so i will name this minimum h screen so that it takes up the whole screen space you can see the black background so i will also add display flex to this and justify center so each element will be horizontally centered and item center so each elements will be uh, vertically centered too and let's remove this demo and inside this class we will add a content the content so this is not any tailwind css class this is just semantic purposes classes so i am just using those classes to remember what this div is using for so i will be creating a form inside this form and we don't need this action we will be using on submit but that's for later purposes 
let's first start designing the form before that i will add heading to the form the auto suggestion is showing that apply is the h1 tag but we won't be doing that we will say join the top one person creators and uh, it has given some auto suggestion classes let's see what is the styling for now okay as we have black background so we won't be seeing that let's change this background color remove this and let's see how this is join the top one person creators but the title is too big so hovering over this you can see the font the font size is 2.25 rem or 36 pixels so we will do this like 2 xl so the font size is 1.5 rem and now this is looking just fine so we have to add a tagline too so for tagline we can add create link tree for your brand and okay i will i should just split the screen so it's easy for me to see and let's uh, close this one and now it's well enough and let's resize the windows for a better view okay now it is looking fine and let's center this for that we will use class name text center text center and it will be centered and inside the form okay inside the form we need three uh, input places one is for handle one is for email and one is to set password and if you want you can also input other fields but we don't want to make the form look so much complicated that's why this simplicity purpose so i will create three input fields input type first one will be will be email and then next one will be input type password password and the user handle will be input type text default text okay so the input types are not properly visible so what i will do i will add class name to them uh, shadow nd medium shadow so the input types will be visible i believe and let's add a border border of two okay those are being styled uh, horizontally so what i will do I will, in the form i will add a class name add display flex and flex row so they will be okay uh, sorry not row actually column so they will be uh, displayed column wise and let's add a gap of five so all the child inside this flex property will have a gap of five so let's decrease this by three oh no four okay four is fine i believe and inside all this uh, i will add padding x of three and padding y of two and add a border radius rounded md and the field is so well enough and i don't want this black border on focus so what i will do in three of them on focus after adding focus and colon the classes i'll be adding will only be enabled on focus event so i will add outline none so when focusing those outline will be gone let's add placeholders for uh, each of them placeholder is equal to social handle place holder is equal to enter your email place holder is equal to enter okay set a password not enter set a password as you can see we also have a instagram icon here uh, before to that instagram handle so for that we will have to convert this input field into a span so i will add a span and inside that i will add an image tag and after that i will add this input field and inside this image field i will have to do something that will bring me that instagram icon to grab some icons i will head up i have couple of resources so these are some resources and i will choose svg viewer 
so i will search for instagram and let's choose a relevant icon for this this one i believe is good okay uh, i have to full screen that for a better view okay this one is good and its size is also low uh, lower than others so i will click on optimize and i don't need width so i will delete that copy this svg i can use this instead of this and uh, this will work just fine but i have to resize that okay i have to resize that as i said so i want to be using that in this way so what i will do i will do ctrl z and i will open up the files and inside the public directory i will add a folder name svg and then i will add this svg as ig.svg and then i will paste this so this SVG is now uh, saved and let's change the SVG stroke color to gray that will give me a better look and let's see how we can use that by using slash we can use all the public folder uh, static items and inside that we are using SVG folder so SVG and inside SVG folder we are using ig.svg ig.svg and now we can see the SVG is visible dynamically so we can just change this portion and it will dynamically fetch any image or any asset we have inside the public folder so now let's style this and let's uh, give a width of 8 okay uh, i believe this is working fine but just we have to make this row wise so i will add flex display flex and flex row and you will see this is now working and one thing notice that the shadow is not covering the whole screen so this will look something odd so what i will do i will just simply copy this styling and cut it and then the styling will be added inside this pan so this is just working fine as in our example so the icon should be a bit more smaller so i will add a w6 yes that is fine and after the svg i will add a spacing so i will do m r which will add margin right and margin of 4 we have a spacing after this and users can simply type it but still you can see as we have removed the removed the classes from this input field so the outline is still visible now and we will again uh, add this focus focus outline none so now the outline will be gone and let's decrease the margin to 3 or 2 now everything is working fine and let's just uh, uh, increase the font size a bit so for the font specifically i would add a form size of text md is normal so i will add uh, text lg let's see okay the form is well visible and let's add a uh, margin top empty of 5 great and let's take a look at this whole form so this is the content and add a border to just to debug that how it is looking border to so you can see this is the uh, we will remove that border definitely later if we need to but let's add a padding x on the x axis let's add a padding of uh, 3 see and this is uh, taking the shape padding 4 okay and padding y uh, about 5 or uh, 8 how does it look so we don't actually have to remove the border this is looking fine just need to add rounded value so it adds some border radius rounded lg okay uh, for better to excel double xl so this is looking great and now add some shadow box shadow of md let's see okay now lg let's try yeah this is looking great but let us compare with the thing we are cloning trying to clone we have to add this to start building your hub okay uh, we <laughs> we need to find this emoji but let's skip the emoji for now you can always search on google let's just focus on the designing part for now and we will add this tag again so after this tag 
here comes the another tag what was that again start building your hub okay start building your hub and this one will be having class name of text center obviously and if you notice that it will have some spacing on top and bottom so it will have uh, spacing of py on the y axis and of 5 pixels let's try yeah this is looking fine and font was bold of course font was bold and uh, let's text color set text color to text gray 500 let's try it this is taking the shape the main thing that is left is this account type which was a checkbox type for that we will start adding the checkboxes so immediately after the input fields where is it okay immediately after the input fields i will add a heading let's say heading 5 account type let's center this and also make this font a bit smaller class name text sm text center and immediately after that was those um, checkboxes so for those checkboxes along with this if you can see and the checkboxes are also having this label so we won't be using directly labels so we will add the checkboxes and then uh, add paragraphs uh, along with them let's start add a span for this checkboxes so they can be done flex for each checkboxes we will create a label let's say label uh, we don't actually need uh, to add label but we are using this semantic label tag uh, for better understanding we can also use the span tag but we are using uh, label to differentiate from other semantic tags like span now inside this we are creating an input input type will be checkbox you can see the checkbox is visible we can you can also use that let me resize it again and we have a checked attribute in the input tag checked while it is checked so we have to do some changes so let me create a variable state variable named const checked set checked is equal to use state so we haven't imported use state upon clicking on this as it is showing this icon it will automatically import uh, the use state you can see it has added this portion inside the import part so we are going to import use state um, by for now it is empty okay so let's not give it name of checked so it will be confusing for us so let's give it a name of category category and we will also use category so while it is checked the category will be set to uh, whatever the value will be so let's also add the value or else i will be confused so for now it is creator was it creator yes it was creator uh, let's not focus on this uh, error for now we will fix this so when it is checked the value will be creator uh, and add this inside commas and and to use this checked we also need to uh, interact it with the function on change when it will be changed a function will be called let's name it what uh, handle category change handle category change and let's create this function too or it will always show errors and it is receiving a parameter event and first do e dot prevent default prevent e e f a u l t it's not necessary until you are uh, just receiving a form but uh, we will do that for practice purposes and how we will use this so when this will be called this function will be called it will catch the event and from whichever element the function will be called it will catch the event and it will ask the event target and this value will be set to category so the category will have event or target whichever element it is the event target and its value so when we are using the targets value we also have to add a value to this so the value itself will be passed to the category state data 
so we will add a value which is uh, the same as this we are passing in the category so when we are clicking on this this will be updated but we can actually uncheck that until we have added one or more so let's copy this and paste it here and we will name this agency agency and let's copy this value will be same category will be same let's try this when i click on this the category will be set to creator when i click on this the category will be set to agency again when i click on this the category will be set to creator and let's set another one and this will be added as brand let's add multiple items together and uh, this is brand and now the styling is a bit mess and we will fix that in a moment so we select all of them together and add class name and this will be flex flex row let's see how where it goes and each of them will have a padding again okay, a margin right three and let's add border to see what is the progress for now we will keep adding the border and inside each checkbox we will add a class of padding class name p of x2 let's see padding does not work here we will probably have to make inline block if that doesn't work too okay that does not work uh, and we will now have to work with this paragraph class name padding of left two three two two is fine i believe okay two is fine and now we can just remove get rid of this what was that border we can get rid of this border okay we have to get rid of this border for all three items so that looks quite catchy so the designing is done and now we have to add this register button we have created this one this one this one and we also have successfully created this account type but obviously this color is missing now and we now have to do this portion now okay great so first things first let's make the color text indigo and let's choose what color like indigo text indigo 500 and see this is probably fine or uh, make it work with 400 and now the submission button input type will be submit you can also do button but uh, i prefer input so the value will be register register or uh, as this is the apply page we have register here but i will keep this uh, button's value as apply as the actual page is for application so let's style this button class name bg indigo 600 let's see what is the color okay and let's make the text color white the vertical padding would be three or two okay and add some border radius rounded md or maybe more rounded let's see how that was yeah almost looking similar and uh, when hovering over this uh, i want cursor to be pointer type cursor dash pointer okay so one thing is left so when someone submits the form it actually calls a function so we haven't added on submit okay, now i have to add on submit function on submit it will call a function and the function name will be handle register and we create this function now or else it will keep giving us this error cons handle register which receives a parameter event and again we will do e dot prevent default function and we are missing an e so one thing i have noticed that while clicking on this uh, check boxes i have to click twice in order to uh, get them actually clicked i believe it is uh, for this event dot prevent default so i will actually remove this event dot prevent default 
and let's try this it is seamless now and now coming back to our background which is actually we need to add using custom css we have this background class which we have set up at first so i will come to this background class i will do position position what is going on position relative and i will add a background image background url and we have the images background images this one is for desktop and this one is for mobile i will show you in a bit how to use both uh, different images for different purposes so we have it under public which is uh, which stands for slash and then images then the background image actually so i will do images and then what was the name i will just simply copy that i don't actually have to type it over and over and this one is named what um, background mobile so i will paste this and let's see these changes have taken places and now uh, we haven't actually set a background color for this so let's just set a background color for our total content form so bg white so we have set the background and now let's uh, take a look at the mobile how it looks in the mobile the image is actually a bit distorted so we will use a separate image for mobile we will copy this and we will do media queries at media screen and maximum width 768 pixels and then paste this and change mobile so different image now will be used you can see the different image we had inside this public folder this image is being used as a background for our desktop and this image is being used as background for our mobile so we have one thing missing the image is too shiny so our main form is actually not that attractive so we have to dim out the image without actually editing the image so how we can do that we can add a pseudo class before the background we will do background colon colon before and a content of blank which position will be absolute that is the reason we have done position relative and we don't need position relative here because uh, we have already set up position relative for background the only thing thing we are changing for mobile is the background url and this thing will be available for mobile also so position okay i don't know why i keep uh, misspelling the position absolute and top will be zero and we will make the width full so that's why we are setting top and left to zero so width to 100 percent and height to also 100 percent and now the main thing we will add a background color background color or oh, we can also add black so this thing whole thing will be added to black but we don't want complete black we want a dimming feature so i will add rgb colors so black is black stands for 0 comma 0 comma 0 so this is complete black but we want some kind of opacity control so we will add 0 point almost 5 so half black half image so this is it we have completed the background imaging now anything else left i don't believe anything else is left okay so we don't actually have any footer for this link tree if you take a look at the professional link tree website they don't actually offer this kind of footer because because they are too distracting for other users who are who are opening link tree so we will add this kind of footer coming back to the footer component where we have it let's close this server and components footer we will uh, delete this whole thing that we currently have let's go let's see we have deleted the footer and now start adding this footer the features of this footer is when whenever someone clicks on this this will open up in a affiliate or a campaign link so the main feature as i said it will open up a link so i will add next link i will have to import the link upon clicking on this it will automatically import the next link or maybe i had imported the uh, link as i previously had a footer obviously so i will add a, a link path 
for now I am adding the home path and this will have target blank so it opens up in an, another tab so let's start adding the content for this for now I am adding an image source is the icon for this website which is favicon.ico which is located under public images and so dash is for public and then for images and then favicon.ico mm, we don't need that semantics and now self closing tag the image is working okay the image is working we will uh, set this to absolute so that the background doesn't work uh, we'll see that in a bit and now let's add what was that was it okay that was a heading i believe a uh, heading of five let's add uh, try link tree was it try link tree and you can also add this unicode arrow or you can search on google and copy that i won't be adding that for now and let's add a class name to this uh, text indigo 400 that what is it okay I have to make it a flex row so inside the link I will add a class name flex flex row okay and uh, now item center so they are now vertically centered and the h5 will have a padding left of 5 4 okay 3 will work fine better and it will have a bold font font bold and on hovering it would sh it should change color so let's just uh, close this mobile responsive window and on hovering it should change color so what i will do i would add hover event and then text color will be lighter so text indigo 300 so on hovering the color will change but i don't want it to change color so soon so i will add a transition property so transition uh, you can set colors but i will say uh, transition all and the transition duration will be 300 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds so the 400 milliseconds animation is working fine but the animation i will be adding i will be adding inside in the link just because i will also add a uh, rotate animation to this logo so whenever someone hovers over this image the image will rotate to class name uh, hover rotate um, six or uh, five okay five does not work i believe six works yeah six works I don't I want it to rotate uh, counterclockwise so this will now I have to add a minus and let's add more uh, let's add 45 degrees of rotation so this works just fine so now add a transition to here add transition and duration if the transition is not working for the h6 we will have to add transition separately here and we will remove the transition from the parent element see when we are hovering over this this is affecting this form so we will add display absolute absolute and let's get rid of this background color and text white remove that we are using only text that is using a custom color so we don't need that actually so we'll remove this absolute from here too and make it fixed and let's uh, it is gone so let's add, add a position bottom zero let's see where it is uh, let's add bottom three left half one by two so it will come here and we have to translate it 50 percent so it comes to the middle so we will use minus translate dash x so it uh, translates on x axis and 50 percent defines by one dash two let's define this you can see on hovering it is showing that translate x minus 50 percent so it is coming back minus translate and on translate x axis and this is for 50 percent you can see it has centered so let's just uh, position the footer a bit over like almost like a uh, five let's compare this with this 
Uh, I believe the background color is a bit more blurry than this one. Coming over to this apply module and let's not make it 50% but 80% dim. Okay, now the footer is much more visible and it looks more appealing. Great, great. Uh, so with this, I guess the front end is front end for this apply page specifically is done. Yeah, this is just fine. Let's try this out. We don't actually have the backend as of this moment. We haven't created that, but we can try out this form, of course. Test, test, and we can do one thing. We can try out this form by using a front end. So coming to this, we will have to import the toast. Import toast from React Toastify. We have installed this library. So upon clicking on this handle register, uh, it will say toast dot uh, you have submitted the form. Okay, now you are registered. You are registered. You are registered successfully. Yeah, this should be what the form says. Let's see. All the fields should be required to. Uh, we should make all of them required so that users does not miss any field specifically the required username i mean user handle so make the email required the password required and most of all the social handle should be required okay great and okay the, uh, this should be email obviously let's try you are registered successfully but uh, i have a debugging thing in my mind let's try this out uh, required at the gmail.com never mind it is not going to backend so we can just set anything here so when we are clicking on this we haven't actually added any type of account type that too is being uh, sent to the backend so we can also uh, cut this off when uh, let's say the category is empty right now at this moment so if category is empty let's check uh, let's add a checkpoint here uh, if category is not there category then you are returning here with the toast error uh, add a category add a category let's say we have our backend function here backend call so if there is no category it will simply cut off the function via this return statement we are using required attribute in this three uh, input fields but this uh, category is not using actually any required field so we are handling this with this if else statement there is no else actually uh, so we are using if if there is no category it will return and cut off this function it will no more go to the backend call so this is the actual thing so let's try it out again uh, required at the rate gmail.com and i will set this as password and uh, test and when we click on this it will say add a category so upon adding a category and let's apply this you are registered successfully so in the next video we will be implementing the backend for this registration as well as we will uh, create another form which will be much easier because we will be just cloning this form to login form and we will also add a login functionality register functionality from the backend